Hey, good Tuesday afternoon, everybody. It is noontime and it is time for Hope for Today. I'm Pastor David. Kim is with me again today. And we want to take just about five minutes and share some good news, some hope for today. Uh, today, I want to take you to a passage of scripture that's very special to me because it makes reference to a place, a biblical spot that I have actually been to, we've been to, that is probably my favorite place uh, that I've been to in the land of Israel. It's a place where the Lord has just given me some very special moments in this place. So it's really special. The story is special. And I want to read it. And so I'm, I'm going to read it. And, and every day I'm reading out of the New King James Version, if you're reading along. And this is found in 1 Samuel chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. It says, Now it happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. So he came to the sheepfolds by the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of that same cave. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with these words and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward, went out of the cave, and he called out to Saul saying, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say, indeed, David seeks your harm? Look, and he held up the garment. He said, look this day, your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you, but my eye spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. En Gedi is a very special place geographically. If you've ever been there or you ever have the opportunity to go, and we're going to go again, we would love for you to go with us. En Gedi is in the middle of what is called the Masada Desert in the area of the Dead Sea. And it is, if you go there, you'll see as far as you can look to the east, west, north, and south, it is desert. But there's a place there called En Gedi to this day. It's a place where there's a spring and a waterfall and it fills a little pond with water. In the middle of the desert, there is a spring, a river. And I could talk a lot about that because that's where I'm sure David got the, the phrases like he makes rivers in the desert. Um, it's probably, I walked up to the top of En Gedi and there was a, just a still small spring and, and I looked beside me and there were two deer that were drinking out of that spring. And I was reminded how David said that even as the deer pant after the water, so my heart pants after you. But when I was standing there a few years ago, the Lord really spoke something to my heart. You know, David was anointed to be king. He was Jesse's son and he was working on the backside of a field, taking care of sheep. When the Lord called him, Samuel came to anoint the king and the oil would not flow for the other brothers. You know the story. And so his dad, Jesse, calls David out of the field and David comes and the oil flowed upon his head and Samuel anointed him to be king. What's interesting about that is sometimes you're appointing, or not sometimes, really all the time, the appointing will follow the anointing. David was anointed to be king, but the first thing, the next thing he did was, he, he didn't go to the throne, he didn't go to the palace, he didn't become king overnight. What he did after he was anointed and God said, this is my man, he is the king. The next thing David did was, he went right back to the thing he was doing, taking care of sheep and being faithful. I don't know about you, but there's been times when God gave me a word and said, I want you to go here. And it felt like it was going to happen overnight and it didn't. But what we have to understand is what Paul says in Romans 8, 28, that the Lord is working all things together for the good to those who love the Lord. 
When I stood there in Getty, at, in Getty a few years ago, I thought about that. David was anointed king, but he had to go back to doing that, that manual labor that he had done before. And I'm sure many times he thought, God, if I'm anointed to be king, then why am I shoveling sheep dung? Why am I taking care of these sheep and doing this dirty daily routine that is just not what a king does? I believe that God was preparing him for what he had prepared for him. Because the reality is where David went back to taking care of sheep was in this area of En Gedi. En Gedi, as I said, was a desert place, but in that place there were caves and there were waterfalls and places that if you did not know the terrain, then you would not know where those places were. So the Bible, we just read that when Saul was pursuing David many, many, many years later, Saul was pursuing David and the scripture says that Saul took 3,000 of his best men to pursue David. And if you read this story on the surface, you would think that Saul had an advantage over David because he had 3,000 great men, he was the king of the land, and David just kind of had a motley crew and he was hiding out in these caves. But the reality is that David, God had prepared David for what he had prepared for him. And because David went back to taking care of sheep, there was a season where he was in boot camp and didn't know it. God was preparing him for something that he was not aware of. He was teaching him in those moments where the caves were but so that he could take shelter with his sheep. He was teaching him where the springs in the desert were so that he could water the sheep. But what he was really doing is preparing him with strategy for battle. And in this story, David had an advantage over Saul because of that season where he had to go right back to doing the things he'd always done thinking maybe at times that God had forgotten him, but in reality, God was getting him ready for what he had ready for him. And the thing about the terrain there in Israel is, it's not just one cave, it's a cliffside of many, many, many caves. And so in that process of training, David probably explored all of, all it. of it. He was familiar with the terrain. And as we said, God was getting him ready for what he had ready for him. And God is preparing you in a season where you feel and you know that God has anointed you, but yet you wonder why you're doing the things you're doing. Why aren't you walking in that place that God's given you vision for? The reality is you are in the will of God. The steps of a righteous man and woman are ordered by the Lord. And if you'll be faithful today, God is taking you to your victory tomorrow. So just be faithful today. If you'll be faithful today when you wake up tomorrow, be faithful again another day and another day. And every day God is leading you to purpose, which leads you to destiny. And that is your hope for today. Don't give up, keep pursuing, keep walking in the will of God. The best is yet to come. That's your hope for today. And we'll see you tomorrow at noon for another edition of Hope for Today. God bless you.